Today is the day. I have had this rifle for a little bit, but I haven't been able to shoot it because I haven't been able to find ammo for it. Today we're putting together my ultimate deer slaying machine. I'm going to show you how to set up a proper hunting rifle. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you my knife that has a magazine in the new segment, the doodad of the week. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. NordVPN is a way to keep each of your devices a lot more secure when you're using the web. What NordVPN does is when you are accessing a website, it cloaks a lot of the sensitive information about your device. So for example, if I go to NordVPN's website, it shows me right there that I'm in St. George, Utah. It has my IP address. Everything is open to whoever's website I go to, but you turn on NordVPN and suddenly that information doesn't get to them. It also is blocking malicious software and malicious websites, which is something I need to get my parents set up with because every single time I sit down at their computer, I'm horrified at how much junk has gotten on their machine. It's also useful if you're traveling and you need to access a site in the US that kind of blocks you like a video site because it, you're in a different country. So check out NordVPN. I have a link in the description and the first pinned comment and make your devices a lot safer on the web. Well, this video did not go as planned at all. So I filmed the build of this rifle talking all about it, the setup, everything with the scope, got out to the range with my son, Cole, my 11 year old was with me. And I took the first shot and as I lifted the bolt, it felt like a pretty heavy bolt lift. And I thought, huh, well, maybe I'm just getting used to the action, right? It's a new gun to me. I took the second shot and it was a very heavy bolt lift. And when I pulled it back, nice. the, the case was the expended case, it did shoot was locked in the chamber. It didn't come, it didn't extract. And I thought, whoa, something is really wrong here. I've shot this gun before, no issues. And I'm using factory match ammo. Then I think about temperature and it was 94 degrees, but it was in an air conditioned car the whole way. And it was probably out of the car for three to four minutes. I guess we're gonna have to take that in another video because I don't, I don't wanna jump to any conclusions, especially with something that has to do with safety. I like to go piece by piece and make sure we're doing this thing right. So today, we're just gonna focus on the actual build of this rifle, and it is sweet. Okay, let's start with the rifle platform itself. So this is the Fierce CT Rival, C for carbon, carbon barrel and carbon stock, T for titanium. This is a titanium action, so it's super lightweight. And then this rival stock is really, it's intended for a long range shooter. It has a decently high cheek piece. I always wish they'd go even higher. Um, nice flat forend here, a nice big palm swell with a vertical grip so you can get a nice approach on the gun. I love that they use limb saver recoil pads. I think they're the best in the business right now. A nice flat uh, thumb shelf. They're making a heck of a gun over there at Fierce. I actually went and toured their place maybe two months ago. I uh, met everybody there. Man, just a really good crew of people, but I did pay my own money for this rifle. If you're unfamiliar with Fierce, and I always kind of like to get to know a company before I do business with them, go to the Fierce Life podcast and listen to the episode they did. I think it's called The Origins of Story or something like that in May, 2022. Um, if that doesn't convert you to being a fan, I don't know what will. I, they're just good people over there. Just got just good vibes over there with them. Uh, so it made me a fan of the company for sure. And they're just building awesome rifles. I mean, they look so good. I, for this one, I picked the Vortex Razor HD LHT 4.5 to 22 by 50. First of all, the LHT, this thing is very lightweight, which is huge. I like that it has the pop-up turret so that you don't accidentally bump it while you're shooting. That's awesome. Has your parallax illuminated reticle with a push button. I love to see a push button illuminated reticle because when it's that kind that you, you know, twist it, I man, I'm never going to remember to turn that thing off. And so the battery is going to be dead. So I like the push button because it'll auto off itself. And then a, a capped windage turret because I'm not going to dial for a windage. I'm just going to hold over. 
The one thing I wish they had done differently on this is give me a throw lever. When it's this hard to turn the zoom ring, I wish they had a nice throw lever that would make it a lot easier, especially when you're hunting and you want to quick make an adjustment. That would have been big for me, but you can get them aftermarket as well. So when we're talking about setting up your rifle, it is critical that you have your reticle perfectly leveled. And then you need a bubble level on the scope. I always get these aftermarket bubble levels. Every gun I shoot, I like to put a bubble level on there. What you'll notice the very first time you do your scope this way, you're gonna put this up to your eye and you're gonna say, oh no, it's way off. It's way canted like this if you're, if you're right or maybe it's backwards for you. It'll look like that anyway. The reticle will be angled that way. And that's because of how you're putting your head down onto the rifle. Um, and that's actually normal. And so you have to have a bubble level so you know where to put that scope. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you did to your scope. You, you know, tried to get everything perfectly sighted in by an advanced scope. If you are dialing up that scope, but the reticle wasn't level, as you're going up, it's just going sideways. And so it has to, if you don't have that system, there's no way you're going to shoot long range. Now let's go to the bipod. Spartan Precision, javelinbipod.com. They sent this out to me. I've heard a lot of good things about these bipods, specifically for hunting though. They make a lot of different bipods for different purposes. This is their pro hunt model. And kind of the concept here is it packs up super tiny. You could just chuck this in a big pocket if you have a pocket in your uh, hunting pants, or of course, just in a side packet, side pocket on your backpack. And then you get to keep your gun as you're hiking around, no bipod on it, nice and clean. The whole thing feels really high quality. Uh, like this, you touch this thing and you're like, okay, that thing wasn't cheap. It, it feels really nice. A couple things that I found with the scope, uh, or with the bipod, excuse me, are one, it's pretty high on you know a table. Every bipod I use, I really like it to be capable of shooting bench rest as well, because often I'm gonna take it to the range and get it sighted in and stuff like that. When I get to my hunt, I wanna take one 100 yard shot and just make sure everything's exact. So I like it to be able to get low enough that I can take a nice bench rest shot and then obviously as high as you can as well. Well, this one puts you up very high from the table if you're wanting to use this for bench rest to kind of get it sighted in. Probably too high to be able to, you know, accurately shoot this uh, just at the range. Um, so I, I did wish that the legs went just a tiny bit wider so that we could get lower to the ground. And to be clear, they have a lot of different models of the bipod, but this one specifically, I, for me personally, I would want one that got a little bit lower for that situation. Now high to me is also a very big deal when I'm hunting because man, all the time, I mean a lot in the places that I've hunted, there's just kind of grass and you don't have to shoot standing or even sitting cross-legged. You actually could get kind of to prone, but there's enough vegetation that you kind of got to get above that layer. I just, I've faced that situation a lot of times, especially hunting in South Africa. And anyway, so for this, that is really nice. I love that. Um, I also noticed there is a pretty generous back and forth kind of wobble um, in the bipod. Every bipod has a little bit, just a little bit more movement than I guess maybe I'm used to seeing, but every bipod has some movement and you're trying to lean, kind of lean into that bipod. I'm really interested. I like it. I like the idea of it being very light carbon fiber, like super light compared to most bipods and being able to take it on and off for hunting. So I'm gonna try it this year on my couple upcoming hunts. Oh, by the way, you guys, I have a New Mexico Unit 50 elk tag and I know nothing, nothing about that unit. Uh, so if anybody lives over there or knows anything about that unit, maybe wants to come out and hunt with me because I'm going on that hunt alone, um, let me know, email me. I'm also going to uh, Eastern Utah in October. So if anybody kind of has any hints, hints for me, if you know those areas, kind of kind of point me in the right direction, that'd be awesome. I was so disappointed this year. I applied for a ton of different tags, 
but that's all I drew. And I tried to get tags for my son. He didn't draw anything for this fall. So, you know, if somebody wants to trade an awesome hunt, if you're a great outfitter, want to trade a great hunt for me and my kids for some publicity. <laughs> Dang it. Overall, I think kind of jury's a little bit still out on this bipod, but man, for hunting, I like how high it gets. It is a really nice construction, and so I think I'm going to like this thing, but I need to, to use it a little bit more. The suppressor. This is the Dead Air Nomad 30. I really like this suppressor. It has just given me great results. I like something that's short, cheap, and from a big name company that's doing a lot of testing with them. That's really all I'm looking for when I'm looking for a silencer. But man, it's rare that I'm shooting a rifle that doesn't have a silencer on it anymore. They're expensive, it takes time, even though that's getting a lot, a lot faster now. But man, I, I shoot everything suppressed. That's my dream build, but we have a new segment that I'm going to start doing on the channel, and that is the doodad of the week. Just some kind of cool outdoors product that I kind of want to show you. This, a company called Tough Built sent out these uh, utility knives, and it's not sponsored at all. They just sent it to me, no strings attached. If any companies are interested in sending stuff out, you can go to backfire.tv slash product. And so no strings attached to anything, but they sent it out and they said, hey, if you happen to use it on a video, cool. These things are fun. So um, the way it works is you have a release, you have a magazine for your utility knife, it's sweet. So you slap your mag in and then you can slide it up. They have kind of this knife attachment, a little gut hook looking thing. And then of course, just a straight blade like that anyway. I just thought the concept of a magazine on a utility knife was pretty cool. 